The Redskins rolled up. This game was sweet revenge for the Redskins, who hadn't beaten the Cyclones since 1979. Despite being whistled for 17 penalties, the Redskins almost had a shutout until SHG scored on a deflected pass with just over two minutes left in the game. Boyle had a huge game, catching 10 passes for 198 yards, Ross rushed for 125 yards, while Charles Braun had three sacks and Mike Pierce had two interceptions. Working for the first time in 20 years was, uh, I mean, it was very important just to get the monkey off our back, I think, but, but also just everybody in the community who has, who has lived here for, for a lot longer than I have. I've been here six years. I've been hearing about it for six years. But for everyone else who's been listening to it, and, and uh, you know, I, I know that I, I, for the first five years that, that I was here, they beat us, and, and I always felt like we handled it in the right manner. I thought we always handle it with, uh, with class and dignity as best you can. Uh, I was again proud of our kids just seeing the difference in the way that Sacred Heart Griffin handled their defeat this year. I didn't really feel like they handled it very well. I thought they'd always in the prior five years always shook hands and said good game to us and always uh, uh, treated us with a lot of dignity but that was okay when they were beating us and uh, this year we beat them and, and uh, there's a lot of talk on the radio about us not playing uh, with sportsmanship, and, and that's just an out-and-out -out falsehood. Our kids played with uh, class. They played hard. They hit hard. Uh, we did make some mistakes in the game, but but uh, uh, won the ball game 28 to seven. And to bring that home to Chatham after so many years and get the monkey off the, the the community's back was great. It was great to be a part of it.
Central State Aid and help send the Cyclones to one of their worst seasons ever. second half limited the Redskins to a 56-7 win over the Lincoln Railers. Ross had 136 yards rushing and Boyle had 116 yards receiving. Glenwood's ability to mix it up both on defense and offense allowed the Redskins to dominate the contest. At halftime, the score was 35-0 and when the third quarter began, it didn't take long for the Redskins to increase their winning margin. Running back Skip Clayton got the quick score by rumbling down the field to increase the lead to 41 to nothing. The Redskins added on to the score when Charles Brunn snagged a fumble, returned it for 38 yards and a touchdown. Defensive lineman's dream to get a touchdown, and I'm just glad I was the one who did it on the team, and it was an awesome feeling. Um, we had a great defensive line, and running back Mike Pierce scored Glenwood's final touchdown when he ran the ball in from 25 yards out. Big Willie Styles all in it, getting jiggy with it. Getting jiggy with it. Getting jiggy with it. This game could be considered one of the Redskins' two tough regular season games. Springfield managed just 150 yards of total offense, but still had a 13 to 10 lead at the start of the fourth quarter. For Glenwood. It all came down to the next to the last possession of the game. With 7.35 left in the fourth quarter, Jurgens passed to Boyle, making the gain of 44 yards. Four plays later, Ross plunged into the end zone with the winning score, the skin's leading touchdown, making it 17 to 13. Getting jiggy with it. Getting jiggy with it. Getting jiggy with it. 
D-I-S if you need a lift Who's the kid in the drop? Who else will slip? Living that life, some consider a myth Rock from South Street to one two fifth. Women used to tease me, give it to me now nice and easy Since I moved up like Georgia Wheezy Cream to the maximum, I'll be asking them Would you like to bounce with your brother that's black enough? Never see Will attack enough uh-uh. Rather play ball with Shaq enough, flat enough Like getting, uh-uh. thought I took a spell But I didn't trust the lady of my life, she hitting Hit her with a drop top, with the ribbon Crib for my mom on the outskirts of Billy You trying to flex on me? Don't be silly Getting jiggy with it Getting jiggy with it Getting jiggy with it Getting jiggy with it Uh, uh minutes left in the Springfield game. We were down by three. We knew we had to get a big stop on defense and that the offense would get the ball back and take it down and at least get a field goal and tie it up, if not score. And they took it down, score, and we beat them. This was the first true test for the Redskins, and there were many more to come. season in this game, 20 points of 27-7 early in the third quarter. Any chance for a perfect season seemed lost until the Redskins miraculously rallied for 28 unanswered points. Appearing more angered than stunned by the Taylorville offensive outburst, Glenwood scored on every second half possession. In the fourth quarter, Taylorville now stymied by a defense led by Charles Brunn and Adam Coombe saw the Redskins go 73 yards on five plays, which included the touchdown and field goal that gave the Redskins the lead. The team posted the final score with a Boyle interception on the Redskins' own three-yard line. Ross made the touchdown with 148 left, and the defense held Taylorville the rest of the way. our team. I mean, the games before, you know, we, Jacksonville started coming back on us. We had to pull together a little bit and hold them off, hold them off. but when we got to Taylorville, we, after we won, we kind of, we finally found out what it was like to ha- have the pressure on us as a team and how, would we, how, would, how we would react to the pressure. And uh, after that game, I really felt like we figured it out, how to react and stay calm. And it helped us out through the rest of the season. We had some really close games, you know, where we got behind, like Geneseo, and the the, uh, the Rantoul game was a really close game, and all those all those games we really had the confidence to come back. And the Taylorville game I think was a turning point and helped us build our confidence for the rest of the season.
broke open a close game with two quick touchdowns in the second half to clinch at least a tie for the Central State 8 title. Lanphier overcame a brutal first half offensively in which it managed but 15 yards total offense and no first downs. Senior defensive lineman Josh Bridges, a transfer from Lanfear, talks about playing against his former team. Well, here is different, but it was still exciting. And I don't know. I'm Redskin now, and we got home the state championship, so. At the beginning of the third quarter, Lanfear came out on fire, scoring their only touchdown, tying the score. Boyle extinguished that fire about halfway through the third quarter with a sliding catch from 20 yards out. The last touchdown of the game was another Jurgens to Boyle connection in which Jurgens made a 60-yard pass and Boyle ran it the rest of the way. Homecoming events have been held throughout the week, and the game made an exciting end to it. Playing without Jurgens, Lynch, and Josh Bridges, the Redskins registered their first and only shutout of the season. Mike Pierce stepped in at quarterback and led the Redskins on five touchdown drives. The first Glenwood score came midway through the first quarter when running back Chris Ross plunged forward on a two-yard carry. Zach Murphy kicked the extra point to make it 7-0. There was no stopping the Redskins' offense the rest of the way. Bruner added two touchdowns while Ross had one and junior Mike Greco stepped in as the kicker making the extra point each time. It's a little different from normally trying to tackle people to people trying to tackle you and uh, trying to take control of people that normally are taking control of somebody else. Um, besides that, though, it's the same. The victory clinched the outright Central State 8 title for the Redskins.
Luster first half, the Redskins stormed to a lopsided non-conference victory to seal a perfect 9-0 regular season. Ross had 155 yards rushing and Jurgens 147 passing. With 6.25 to go in the first quarter, quarterback Griff Jurgens connected with Bill Clayton. In the second quarter, Chris Ross rumbled 13 yards into the end zone to put Glenwood up 12-0 with 6.25 left until halftime. Jurgens' two-point conversion run made it 14-0. Escuda only scored one touchdown in the second half, but the Redskins responded with two touchdowns by Ross and one for Boyd. Uh, no, no, we're the first people I ever did it. And hopefully we're not going to be the last, and I hope many of the sophomores and junior guys can follow in our footsteps. Even though this was the team's first undefeated regular season for the first time in school history, everyone on the team now focused on the playoffs and now awaited them. In a game that saw 790 yards of total offense, including 227 yards rushing by Chris Ross, the Redskins survived. Fast speed by the Eagles' offensive line helped them rally from a 26-8 deficit in the first half. From the get-go, we knew that, they were, that it was going to be a tough game. I mean, last year everybody kind of looked past Highland in the first round, but this year, I mean, they drew us Rantoul in the first round, and we just knew it was going to be a tough game, and we knew that they had a lot of great athletes. They had a couple of kids that were going to the University of Illinois, and we knew that we had to come out and do things right, and if we did things right, that we'd have a good shot at beating them and that we were the better team. The Eagles came to within one point of the Redskins to make it a 39-38 game with a little more than five minutes left. With less than two minutes to go and Rantoul still a touchdown and a two-point conversion from a tie, the next round was the last thing on Glenwood's mind. With Rantoul on its own 42 and shown the ability to surprise the Glenwood defense, Pierce picked off a second and six pass in the flat, taking it from the Rantoul 46 to the two, where the offense kneeled, then enjoyed the triumph. The win sent the Redskins to Oak Park to take on the vaunted Fenwick Friars of the Catholic Metropolitan League.
Glenwood brought to Oak Park Fenwick the attack well recognized by foes downstate. Rick Jurgens threw four touchdown passes and ran for one score, completing 16 of 22 passes for 248 yards. Cam Kirsch benefited most from the passes, scoring two touchdowns. Glenwood scored on all three second quarter possessions, beginning with the connection to Ken Boyle from Griff Jurgens. Kirsch's last catch in the third quarter decided the outcome of the game. The win propelled the Redskins into their second straight quarterfinal match and made them more than just a local phenomenon. You know, everybody in Chatham's talking about how they're supposed to be such a powerhouse, but, you know, so watching my film and everything, uh, I don't know, I didn't really see it. And I, I wasn't that intimidated at all. Uh, I don't think our team was either. And, you know, when we went out and did the job, you know, got kind of scared a few times, but, you know, we always knew we'd come back and uh, win it. So, I don't know, it was, it was a good time, and uh, glad we came out on top. Down 14 to nothing, the Redskins came back for 31 unanswered points to move into the semifinals for the first time in school history. Ross the quarterfinals is a big milestone for us. Uh, getting there last year and losing to Metamora, it's real hard on all this play. And uh, going through Canton, that felt that felt great. Finally overcoming our last fault, our last falter from last year. Ross led the way with 218 yards rushing on 33 carries. The score was tied 14 to 14 into the fourth quarter. Lynch kicked a 29-yard field goal to put the Redskins up 17 to 14. Then Ross capped an eight-play 90-yard drive with a 51-yard touchdown run to make it 24 to 14. Finally, the deal was sealed when Skip Clayton recovered on a Pete Holock fumble on the ensuing kickoff. Ross scored one final touchdown to put the game out of reach. Knowing that I gave gave our team the lead, but I knew after I kicked the ball to the uprights, it wasn't the it was in the third quarter, and there's a lot of game left, so I didn't really think too much of it. I was just happy that our team got the lead. The Redskins return to the road next week against the Geneseo Maple Leafs with a shot at the state finals hanging in the balance. All the previous victories that the Redskins had were dwarfed when the team played the Geneseo Maple Leafs. As both Glenwood and Geneseo fans packed J.D. Darnell High School's football stadium with an estimated crowd of around 10,000, everyone got their money's worth. Down 16 to nothing, the Redskins stormed back to take a 27 to 16 lead. However, Geneseo came back to tie it at 27 to 27. Then as their offense stormed down the field, 
The Redskins' defense stepped up and held them at the 34-yard line with seven seconds left in the game. The Maple Leafs set up for a field goal, and every fan sat in deep thought. If they made this field goal, there would be virtually no way for the Redskins to come back. checking with the kicker and at about the time the holder was checking with the kicker he raised his hand and the ball was snapped but his eyes went there and and the ball uh, deflected off the knee and when uh, when Crawford picked it up he only needed a step because he was probably one of the fastest kids on the field at that particular time and unfortunately he, he didn't have that extra step that he needed so that, that, but it did we you know we kept him from beating us in, in regulation As Zach Crawford recovered the deep snapper's fumble, the, Gre the Glenwood crowd went crazy. The game went into double overtime. Ken Boyle made the first touchdown, but Geneseo also scored. As Geneseo made the first attempt in double overtime, Matt Samoski fumbled the ball with Zach Crawford recovering it. Rourke sent kicker Zach Murphy out on the first down, and he delivered. Hope they don't block it. Good call by Coach Rourke to take that timeout and to bring up Murphy. And the crowd is making sure they're getting everybody quiet so everybody can hear what is going down on their line. We want to make sure that the offensive line can hear every call. And I've never seen this crowd of this line so quiet before. I know Murphy can do it. I'm a keeper. Here we go, guys. The Redskins were now on the way to the 1999 Class 4A state championship football game for the first time in school history.
The Redskins now had a full week to prepare for the biggest games of their lives. Adam Coombe talks about what went on. It was uh, kind of a crazy week. Monday we get to practice and got from Clarence out to take our picture to put in a clarion, every player. And we get sized up for shoes. We get our shoes on Tuesday. Wednesday we go to U of I and practice. That was fun. We spent, got out of school early, went and practiced. Thursday was Thanksgiving, so we had practice in the morning. Daily got hurt in practice, and we were all wondering. And then Friday, we had our usual pregame, and Saturday was the game. But it's tough all week getting ready because, you know, you had all this other stuff going on. Everybody wanted to talk to you. You know, you have pep rallies, and everybody's telling you good luck, and you just you got to focus on the game. And it was tough to do, but you got through it. And one state title. November 28, 1998, game day. The Class 4A game was scheduled at 11, but many of the fans were up bright and early, excited about the oncoming contest. An estimated 500 cars lined up at the junior high school parking lot, much more than ever expected. The caravan tried to stay single file on the interstate and, although a little dangerous once in a while, succeeded in showing everyone that the fans, band, cheerleaders, and especially the football team were out in force that day. I feel Scott here. If we ever get this thing turned around, this community is not going to know how to, to deal with it. They're going to be just totally uh, crazy, which was the case. Uh, this is a great football town. Uh, people love to follow the team. Uh, they get involved with it in a big way. Uh, you know, going into the championship game at Bloomington, we had the, the largest crowd at any championship game in the history of IHSA championship football. So that in itself says an awful lot, but just after the game, coming home to the, to the crowds and the restaurants and, and different places and just the, you know, the parades after the championship game, all those things are, you know, the community wants to be a part uh, of, of a winner. Uh, this year we have an opportunity to, uh, to be that winner. On an unusually warm and clear November day at Hancock Stadium, the Redskins fell behind 7 to nothing. However, Ken Boyle's 14-yard touchdown and 17-yard interception return for a touchdown had the Redskins tied 14 to 14 at halftime. Glenwood went up 21 to 14 on a 30-yard touchdown to Lynch, but McNamara answered right back on a 57-yard pass to tie it at 21-21. chance to get in the end zone if it came to me and uh, it felt great once I caught it and, and knew I had scored but uh, you know I felt better just knowing that we were up seven and three minutes away from the first state championship ever. 
fumbled the ball in front of him, uh, Mike Pierce, and I saw him knock him over, and the ball was just sitting there. My eyes got really, really big when I was uh, going down the fall, and I slid on it right when he came up, and he was yelling at me the whole time that he was going to take it out of my hands, but I just held on to it as tight as I could, and once everyone got up, just handed him the rest of my fo the football, and felt great the rest of the week. After Clayton's touchdown, McNamara was driving back down the field, but Nick Buford fumbled a pass by Ryan Magruder and Ryan Daly recovered. The Redskins defeated the Fighting Irish to claim the 4A state title and cap off a perfect 14-0 season. about we're winning this championship game. Uh, it was just a feeling, I mean, that I've dreamed about ever since I was a little kid. I mean, I used to watch the state championship games on TV, and I always dreamed about being there and being able to play in the state championship. And it was just kind of the, the day that we were there, and we kind of went out on the field before the game, and we were walking around, and it was like, wow, I'm finally here. And, I finally have a chance to play in the state championship game and we have a good, shot, uh, we have a good chance to win this thing. And, I mean, I just hope the game would go well and it did. And it was just the greatest feeling after we won that game and we were up, standing up there on the podium holding up the trophy. And just looking at everybody, you know, everybody looking at you, cheering, and, uh, you know, just having your team around you. It's just, you know, a real sense of, like, family, I guess. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the greatest times of my life. We did all that work and worked really hard throughout the season to achieve our goals and uh, make, make our dreams come true. Even though the football season was now over, thousands of fans turned out to the Glenwood Football Stadium, not for a game, but for a final rally and congratulations for the football state champions. Many people showed up with their infamous milk jugs that were used to make noise, and boy did they ever.
the season that each player, coach, and fan had dreamed about was now in the history books. I'll state my case, of which I'm certain I've lived a life that's full I traveled each and every highway and more much more than this I did it my way regrets I've had a few but then again too few to mention I did what I had to do and saw it through without exemption I planned each charted course each careful step along the byway more, much more than this, I did it my way. Yes, there were times, I'm sure you knew, when I bit off more than I could chew. I find it all so amusing to think I did all that and may I say not in a shy way oh no oh no not me I did it he got if not himself then he has not to say the things he truly feels and not the words of one who kneels the record shows I took the blow